Today, a Canadian beef industry conference special with Brenda Grant on the markets. Deborah Murphy here. We are at the Canadian Beef Industry Conference, and I'm joined by Brenna Grant, Executive Director of Canfax. Brenna, hello. Hello. So the past few years have been hard for everyone, from COVID-19 to the extensive drought. You're talking today about the markets. What have you seen in your market analyses over the years that reflect those challenges? Well, I think the last two and a half years, we've just seen multiple demand and supply shocks. You know, it started with all of the lockdowns in March of 2020, with the huge shift from food service into retail. Now, with that, beef actually wasn't as impacted as pork and poultry. Um, Think of all you can eat wing night. Um, So for pork and poultry, they actually had a really big challenge with carcass utilization without food service. Uh, We probably had an easier time, but We also saw such a surge in demand of consumers realizing that their food dollar went a lot further at retail. But it was on the heels of that we were followed in April with plant closures. Disruption in the supply chain and then the subsequent backlog that had to be worked through and packing plants really prioritizing getting fed cattle through the system as quickly as possible and really saw a drop then in cow marketings and slaughter. And since then, we've also seen this yo-yo of, you know, restrictions are lifted, food services open, there's recovery, and not. And so you've got food service that has really been challenged in its recovery in the last two years, and it is coming back, not just in Canada, but also internationally. And so this was compounded by the challenges last year with drought and the surge in feed costs this spring. Um, so we now have seen you know, feedlot and cow-calf margins really squeezed on the cost input side of things. Are we, are we seeing that shift in retail? Is it gonna be enough? Is it gonna go back to the way it was in the old days? Well, we definitely have seen um, some pushback at retail in terms of just general food inflation. And as there's concerns about um, recession in the U.S., is Canada going to follow suit or be able to continue to grow? Usually beef does fairly well in a recession um, because we see switching down uh, from high-priced middle meats to lower-priced items like ground beef. When we get into trouble is when we see uh, price relationships with competing proteins um, get out of historical ranges. And so first quarter of 22, uh, beef prices were surging higher and we were out of historical ranges with pork and poultry. In the second quarter, we saw them come back down. We're now within our historical trading range with pork, but we're still high against poultry. which is a challenge. What's the difference? I mean, you talked about beef is something that we still gravitate towards in recessions. What's the difference there? Because chicken and pork also have lower quality cuts. And that's one of, quite frankly, I don't want to eat chicken seven days a week. We like variety in our food. Um, and I think that's everyone's willing to eat so much of certain things and then they want something different. We, t- we talked about sort of the droughts impact on a producer level and seeing some of the movement in the auction markets. Is that continuing to this day despite, you know, we've, we've seen some positive movement in moisture levels across the prairie provinces, but are, are the sales continuing? Yeah, so that's one where I would say we're starting to see turn a corner here this summer, um, where we had drought-induced placements all the way from last July right up through May. The rain in June was really critical, um, and we've seen improvements in feed availability. Um, We've also seen reduced feed costs, um, which are all positive, and we're seeing those available supplies in terms of cattle on feed numbers drop now to below year ago levels for the first time in 13 months. So things are starting to tighten up, starting to look more positive and going into the fall. It'll be interesting to see what the fall brings. You know, we hear anecdotally around the conference that even though there is feed supplies, a lot of people, this was the last straw. The drought was the last straw. Do you have any 
any insight into what we can expect? Like, are people just waiting until fall to do their herd dispersals? That's a good question. And it's really hard to see until you actually see those numbers um, in terms of placements and feedlots and in terms of actual marketings um, for cows in terms of slaughter or exports where they actually leave the herd. Because we've seen a lot of things in terms of cows changing hands at auction markets where auction market volumes are elevated. You're seeing a lot of cows there, but an auction market is simply changing ownership. It doesn't mean that that cow has left the herd in terms of the national herd. It may just be going from an area where there is no feed to an area where there now is feed. In our in our uh, a summer podcast, we talked to Brett Stewart from south of the border, and he basically he had a lot of positivity for the cattle market going forward. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. We have seen feed prices come down since the end of June and seen lots of strength in the feeder market, um, both in the U.S. as well as in Canada. And so we're actually seeing um, stronger prices. And when you look at the live cattle futures, we could actually see a counter seasonal rally going in to the fall run versus that normal seasonal decline going into the fall run, which is absolutely needed for the cow-calf producer in terms of supporting um, profitability with the higher costs that they're facing. We also talked a bit of that shifting leverage. What are your insights there? Are we going to see a shift and if so when is that? I think we're starting to see it as cattle on feed numbers are tightening up. Particularly in Canada, the U.S. is in drought, and so they are seeing some drought-induced placements support their cattle on feed numbers, which may somewhat delay that shift in leverage, but we're already seeing those tighter supplies and strong international demand driving fed cattle prices up throughout the first half of this year, and according to the futures market, they should continue to strengthen um, through into 2023. You have a bit of a unique job. How often do you get asked, when should I sell my cows? (laughs) I, I don't think it's so much a when. There's lots of producers who you know, sell uh, due to their production system and when they normally do things on the ranch. Um, It's more a question of how do you do risk management and where are the risks coming from? Is that price risk? issue um, where someone should be considering price insurance or is it a feed risk and that's really where we've been in the last year and a half has been with elevated feed supplies and how do we do cost control and risk management on feed so for maybe that could be our our ending piece there is if somebody wants to do a little bit more work on that risk management piece where do you even start Yeah, watching and finding out about um, feed markets, I I think is something that not a lot of cow-calf producers are gonna wanna dig into, but it's something that's absolutely critical for a feedlot um, in terms of following those markets, making sure you have supplies, um, and looking at um, alternative feeds um, in terms of what is the least cost ration. Brenda Grant, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Doug.